Thank you, Tom. Um, those the issues that's out there are old issues because I I no longer publish the dot to dot um, health for health reasons. It got unhealthy because people didn't like what I was publishing and they threatened my life. Uh, <laughs> Not really. I, I, as most of you are aware, I wasn't here last year. It was because of my health, and I, I had some um, serious heart difficulties that, uh, that occurred last year and resulted in some stuff done in the spring, but it, it started in the September last year, and it, I had lots of complications, and it took, a, it took them until the spring to work that part out. And, um, and I saw I was dealing with my heart stuff, and then uh, I was back in the hospital in January this year, and I got diagnosed with something else. And so now I can't have salt and I can't have sugar. And so you'll find me along the field, uh, the field grazing with the cattle, because that's about all that's left for me to eat. Uh, so, um, my, my diet is real strict now. And uh, so it, anyway, uh, uh, this is the furthest I've gone away from home in the last um, several years because of my health problems. Uh, so I had to uh, determine to, to start giving up some things in my life that I enjoyed doing, but still they they put me under pressure because uh, the, the magazine I used to publish, of course, it was 10 issues a year that put me under a deadline pressure all the time. And uh, so I had to start giving up some things to take off some of the pressure. And um, I enjoyed pastoring the two churches I pastored, so uh, so I, I started by, by, you know, keeping that. Uh, but uh, other things I had to give up. Although I've begun to venture into some other projects when I get back that uh, entirely different in a different do uh, direction, and so I'm looking forward to getting started on those when I get back. Uh, and I can I'll tell you more about those one of these days uh, when uh, I'm further along with those. But I can just. Uh, I'm excited about the possibilities. Okay, uh, uh, one of the joys of being the first speaker at any conference, any conference, this happened to me, you know, minister's conference, I've been to minister's conference, uh, on, on, I, sometimes I've had the opportunity to be the first speaker, and, um, and sometimes I've been way back in the program. And uh, one of the joys of being the first speaker is you can step all over everybody else's material. <laughs> you know? And, and she has stepped all over my stuff that I'm going to do for the next two days. <laughs> so um, we won't be here long tonight. We won't be here long tomorrow night when I end. And, but Sundays I'm a preaching, so I love to preach. So we, we may be a little longer so on that. But anyway, we're, we're going to look at some things and look at some maybe some current things and current trends, uh, pieces of information, some that she has alluded to already, some that, that uh, you may be familiar with already, but see just some interesting things that are happening in the world that might escape, certainly escape most of the world's attention, maybe not all of Christendom, uh, but I fear that it, it has escaped a lot of Christendom. In fact, one of the things that, uh, one of the real reasons why this conference is such a beneficial conference is because I think we're losing, are losing people's interests in, uh, in prophecy. As, and as I think Kathy even kind of made it, uh, alluded to, uh, people are just satisfied with a sermon, uh, or, or not a sermon, but a Sunday school lesson or just a, uh, a comment that just simply says Jesus is coming again, and that's about the end of their what they want to know about the prophecy realm, and that's too bad. Uh, again, uh, Kathy has some wonderful uh, things that she has done to show us the depth of prophecy that, that is out there, and how God has interwoven all this stuff together, and He's revealed His plan. And um, the deeper you go, the, uh, the the more you see, and the more fascinating it is to me. And uh, I just love it, and, uh, and I, I love the time that I can do all that. But I don't get all the, t the time, of course, I want to, to study it uh, and uh, to flesh some of these things out. But I want to look at just some things that are happening again in the world. One of the most interesting things is this find of the seal of the prophet Isaiah that they found. And uh, they found it down in here in this territory that's got the, uh, the red circle 
area. <clears throat> and uh, this, uh, here's a, here it is, um, the, the clay impression that has, uh, and it's, uh, has the name of Isaiah on it and it also is from his time period in the 8th century. They can't say conclusively that it's the uh, same Isaiah, but it fits all the markers of that. One of the great things about archaeology is eventually it catches up with the Bible. Right. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, you, you give archaeology enough time, it will prove the Bible. And I think one of the great case in points you know, is uh, Daniel the fifth chapter in Belshazzar. You know, boy, for centuries, they said, there was no Belshazzar that ever ruled. And so, uh, you know, and uh, so then we find, of course, the, uh, that uh, the ziggurat down Ur that has his name on it. There is the, uh, the cylinder of Nabonius. We find out, of course, he was a co-regent. Nabodius was his father. He, he got out of town because uh, the taxes were high. The living was high in Babylon, and he couldn't stand the pressure. And so he, he took a group and went on the field and left Belshazzar, his son, and he's identified now in history and uh, things we have, left him there. And that's why Daniel, uh, why the fifth chapter of Daniel makes so much sense when Belshazzar says, I'll make you third in the kingdom. His father was first, he was second, Daniel was third. Perfect math, perfect yeah, pieces of information. History was always there. Uh, but uh, people did doubt it. They, they were, in fact, the skeptics would look at that and the critics and say, that, you know, uh, here's, here's the proof that the Bible is wrong. Now, now you find out archaeology proves it right. And this could be. The more that they dig, the more that they find this could be something that deals with the, with the actual prophet Isaiah. Makes no difference to us, and it may not make a lot of difference to other people uh, necessarily, but I do think that it is certainly an intriguing find that they have found, and they continue the digging around uh, Israel. I like this. Uh, because for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that certainly fits the man, you know, that, that we're, we're talking about here. Who they found this. Um, was, there was a man in the Old Testament spoke. Uh, that was one of the great men. One of the things you know, I noticed when we came, of course, you don't have a drought this way, do you? Got water, water, water everywhere. Um, uh, that's interesting, and, and it has a little path of, of, of water that goes up through there. But the, there is actually a lack of uh, precipitation across the southern and western United States that's led to a growing drought this winter. 36% of, of the country is experiencing some form of drought. And uh, we, again, you're, you're not uh, thinking about that here. but. I'll throw this up here now. It's going to, it keeps blinking on and off. Yeah, I'm going to have to take it off there because it drives me crazy. This is from the Earth and Sky News. It's a wonderful website. Uh, you might want to get that. It'll send you daily information about stuff. Not just stuff like this, but also we're going to refer to it a little bit later on something else. But it shows uh, the patterns here. But one of the things, and I'm going to, I'm going to leave it because you, you can't, your eyes will not keep up. One of the things that, that's interesting in all that, it, uh, we are in a, um, uh, are on the, the verge of a famine, a food famine in the United States. Two things can contribute to a famine. One is a drought. And this drought that we see and where these areas where the drought is happening right now is in some of the places where they produce lots of our vegetables and fruits and things that end up in the, at the market. And so they're having a, a real problem because of that drought in, in those places uh, that we see. What's the second thing that contributes to a drought? Too much water flooding the fields. I remember one year when I was growing up and we were farming, we planted several of our fields three times because it kept raining and flooding out 
our new growth. And uh, so we'd have to wait till it dried out, plow it back up, plant again, and the same thing happened to us and happened to us and happened to us. If that's a pattern like that continues, you can't produce food there either. And so you're, you, but we are close to a food shortage uh, here in the United States. And if we have a food shortage in the United States, we have a food shortage in the world. Uh, and uh, you can imagine in, in many of the other countries, uh, the, uh, the more, uh, the other countries that are not as developed uh, and who are struggling to, to grow things in the ground that where they are, what they're facing, if we're facing this with all the technology and the possibilities that we have, you know, um, we, got, we got some issues. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? I, th I think it's an interesting scripture because we don't often think of that in terms of prophecy realm, but it really reeks of prophecy all through that verse. And famine is one of those things that is mentioned. But will that separate us? You know, Matthew 24, 7, of course, tells us, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against na a kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. I have in the, um, one of the apps that I also have on my, my tablet is one on earthquakes. And um, it is interesting, uh, when I turn my tablet on, I have to be careful where I am when I turn my tablet on because any time an earthquake happens, it announces it to me. It's always playing in the background and it'll tell me. What is, what is fascinating then is to go on that and come and bring that page up then and look to see the earthquake activity and you realize that there is a lot of earthquake activity that happens every day. Every day and, and, and uh, some of these are you know, we would consider in the major area, but 5.0 or over, they're happening. And uh, we just don't hear about them. And, re and a lot of the reason we, we're getting accustomed to them to happen all the time, and sometimes they, they happen out in the ocean, and sometimes they happen in less populated places, and so they, they don't make any kind of reporting news. But they're happening, and uh, this is increasing. Uh, the numbers show that the earthquake activity is on the rise. And uh, we're due for some severe stuff. We had one, uh, we had a little one in South Carolina here not long ago. Uh, a lot of people don't think about South Carolina as earthquake territory, but actually we are. And uh, I lived in, uh, you know, I lived in southern Illinois at the end of one of the great faults, you know, and uh, uh, we were other people, uh, uh, you know, prepared for. Uh, other weather types of things, we prepared for what an earthquake happening and what we're going to do in the school. And if it's in school, an earthquake happened, you know. Speaking of that, any of you, when you grew up, this is another off the subject a little bit, when you was growing up, when you had some of those preparations, you know, you did those things for the fire drills, and you did the, like I, we did the earthquake, we did those for the tornadoes, because we lived also, I lived also on the tornado alley. And so we had a lot of tornadoes. Because you ever do those where they, and this is back in the Cold War era in the 50s and stuff, when we were worried about the, you know, the nuclear bombs and people building bomb shelters and all that. Do you ever get to have that where they did those drills in school where if in case of nuclear attack, you got under the desk? What was that going to do? You know, is it a magic desk that you had, you know, and you got under it and uh, you weren't going to have any fallout become the nuclear thing? I, ne I could never figure that one out, even as a kid. But I guess it maybe it gave somebody some comfort. Well, we got a little of something over our head anyway, you know. But anyway, that, the, but one of the things that is, is that, of course, people are waiting for California to drop off in the ocean, aren't they? And um, you know, if I didn't have some friends out there, I'd be waiting for that too myself, maybe. But uh, uh, I, I'm not happy with the left coast. Um, but uh, we're, we're looking at all the, these types of things that are happening right now, and we find also the, the, the disease rate of some of these things are on the rise, and we're, we're beginning to deal with superbugs, and our antibiotics are, are uh, at almost an end at controlling some of these things. And they, in fact, they can't control some of them. But we're right at the end, and there's... And, and, uh, 
they're trying to use combinations of them and things to try to fight some of these uh, diseases that, that people are getting now. And uh, there's things I had never heard of. You know, I've, I'll soon be in the, have been in the ministry 50 years. Um, and through that time, you know, you, I go to the hospital and go to the hospital, you hear uh, somebody's got this, and got this, and it all stays kind of standard for years, all that stuff, you know, a gallbladder out here, or a, a thing here, you know. But now I'm hearing all these things I never heard of before, you know, and uh, they're showing me the areas of the hospital that I didn't even know existed because they have to have them to, to treat some of these uh, uh, specialized diseases that are going on now. Uh, I dealt with, I had a couple of kids, uh, and they was in the same family, but uh, each one of them had a rare form of cancer. Uh, they, they were different cancers, but each had a rare, for, uh, rare form of cancer. One had, uh, there's only three known cases of it uh, in the United States, and the other one, had, uh, there was only four known cases in the United States, and they had no idea how to treat it. There was no, there was no protocol that they had, and they just, they just shot in the dark. Fortunately, both of them lived and are in adulthood today, but uh, they didn't, there was something that they was dealing with that they didn't know how to do. There's more of that going on. Okay. And so, uh, uh, this, is, this is, of course, the flooding that's taken place to the Midwest, and you've seen it through here, and if you drove over here like we did, and we'll, that's all we saw all out in the fields, is lots of flooding, but it's going on up the, uh, uh, up the Ohio Valley, excuse me, and up through there. Uh, that was a, a riverfront stadium in Cincinnati we saw there. Um, maybe this make the news about the asteroid that came closer to the Earth than the moon. That happened February 25th. Uh, how many saw that on the front page? Uh, did you see it on the second page? You know, um, it, it's you know a 10 meter asteroid, and it, it came uh, 175,000 miles. Uh, from us on February 25th, and you know what? That's not the closest one that came to us in the last six months. In fact, we've had two come in between us and the moon in the last six months. Um, and you know, the Earth is out here bobbing and weaving all the time. Uh, one of these days, we're going to be catcher, and we're going to hit one, or one's going to hit us. And the, and, the, and the thing that comes out of this is, you would think with all of our technology and Hubble and all that kind of stuff out there, we're looking and we're catching this stuff and seeing it and tracking it for, uh, for distances and distances. No, this stuff seems to come out of nowhere to us. And it's kind of almost a, it's a, a last minute surprise and all they can do is say, well, we know where it is right now and how close it's gonna come to us. Uh, but we've had some near misses. We all, when I think about that, I certainly think uh, about uh, this is, in fact, a picture of it. And the little, the, right in the middle, there is one solid dot. That's the asteroid. Uh, the rest is the stars. The stars leave the streaks when you take these uh, time pictures like this. But the asteroid is coming right toward us, and so that's a little dot that's right there. <clears throat> Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then Mark 13, 25, and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Oh, I, I, you know, we get hit by a large one, it will shake us. I mean, it will shake us all. How about this? The third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters and the name of the star is called Wormwood and a third of the waters became Wormwood and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. Uh, we go back to water, the necessity of water, water for life, you know. Um, of course, uh, Kathy made allusion to this, the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, this is a, a, such a huge deal, not because we finally had a president that did more than promise moving the embassy to the United States. We've had several that did that, but that because he did that, but the significance of this, uh, not just politically, uh, but it's, it's not just a spark that's going to ignite something. This is a full-blown flame that's going to start, I, I think, 
has the possibilities of starting a whole scenario of events, prophetic events, that are going to happen, and I, I think going to happen bang, 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 bang. When this stuff starts happening, if you're not up to date, if you're not paying attention, if you don't know your prophecy material, um, you're just going to be overcome by all that's happening, but you're not going to necessarily realize this all stuff that, that's been uh, prophesied uh, here. Um, here's the, uh, the U, uh, U.S. ambassador to Israel. I'm going to tell you the truth. If I was the United States ambassador to Israel and if I was part of the embassy team and uh, they set up the U.S. embassy, which they want to set, uh, set up here uh, soon, uh, I wouldn't move in for a few weeks. Uh, uh, I think it's got a high possibility of some, some good uh, terrorism to take place. Uh, in fact, um, you know when they want to move in, don't you? May 14th of this year. What is that? Anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. How many years is, will it be from the time they became a nation till the time they move in? Seventy. Isn't that fascinating? Of course, sevens don't mean anything, do they, Kathy? No, 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 no. So isn't that fascinating, though? May 14th, 70 years uh, exactly, and uh, you know, uh, but where that number comes well. Behold, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup that causes reeling to all the peoples around. And when the siege is against Jerusalem, it also will be against Judah. It will come about in that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it will be severely injured, and all the nations of the earth will gather against it. Uh, I think we're going to see some action transpire uh, at, during, uh, in the next few months. Uh, I can be wrong because I don't, I, you know, I don't, uh, 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 haven't seen the full program. God hasn't revealed the whole full program to me, but it certainly has the possibilities of being a, a real volatile keg uh, that's going to just break wide open here at this time. Um, you see, the United States and Israel are preparing for an Arab attack. And this is a, a picture of them uh, uh, going through um, uh, training for an Arab. They're fully expecting uh, an Arab attack to happen. And so uh, they've been in full training uh, for this. Um, of course, uh, we get this from Iran. It says, we will level Tel Aviv, capture Netanyahu if Israel attacks. And of course, this is the... Um, with the possibility that Israel will be the first initiator, not just uh, an attack on Iran now, but another attack that I'm going to show you in a, uh, in a second. But you know what they're saying? Iran says this, um, we are going to host the Hourglass Festival in April. Their Hourglass Festival that they're going to host for the other Arab nations in April is to celebrate the destruction of Israel within the next 25 years. That's what they said. So we're going to have a big festival to celebrate that because it's inevitable that we're going to destroy them. And so um, look, look for that. Make your travel plans to be there for that. I don't know how many rides, rides they'll have or what kind of game booths they'll have, but it is a festival, so you'd be ready to, uh, for it to happen. But uh, one of the things that's interesting that could start all this is the Iranian base uh, near Damascus in Syria. Uh, and there is one, and I may have another picture here of this uh, base, but they are, hey, they're building this military base. Uh, in Syria, uh, and it's not far from the Israeli border, but it's, it's close to Damascus. Um, so Israel, of course, doesn't put up with that kind of stuff. You know, uh, they're very quick to, to put anything in, uh, that they feel is threatening them out of order. 
and they use they have superior air power always have and that of course is the reason why they have been able to be victors in most of their wars is because their superior air power and so uh, it, it's entirely possible that they will go to uh, take these out uh, this uh, Iranian base out as a preemptive strike which of course what you think they think the people in Iran are going to throw a festival that day <laughs> yeah now nah, they, they're going to be ready they're going to be ready in fact they're looking for an excuse um, uh, to get in a fight with Israel and to lob things at them and so it could this could uh, again be something that starts everything to, to happen and we could um, see this uh, scripture kind of come together. We've looked at this scripture many times wondering when it might occur and you know it's, it's possible that that's what we're looking at. They said come let us wipe them out as a nation that the name of Israel will be remembered no more for they have conspired together with one mind. Against you they make a covenant, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Jubal and Ammon and Amalek of the Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have become a help to the children of Lot. So, you know, boy, it names, it names all the enemies. Interesting enough in that passage and in another passage, we'll get to this here, um, in a second, but interesting in that passage and in another prophetic passage, so one nation is missing. Between 1948 and 1973, Israel fought four wars with her ally, uh, with allied Arab neighbors, uh, the neighbor Arab neighbors allied. That's an average of one war every eight years. However, it has not. It has now been four decades since that last major war. Four decades, forty. Years. Uh, they must be uh, a reason for this record span of time without more major conflicts. It is obvious from the news that the Arabs did not uh, change. They're still hostile and object to the existence of Israel in their midst, yet they have stopped trying to launch massive attacks on Israel together as, uh, as three times before. What is the thing that has kept them from attacking Israel up to this point? Uh, Syria says Israeli nuclear weapons program is endangering the Middle East. <coughs> Certainly the United States has been a part of the influence, but Israel has had nuclear weapons for a long time. In fact, this is their research center. And that has kept the other nations at bay. But Iran now, thanks to a a love offering from the United States has uh, soon had the capabilities of nuclear weaponry of their own. One of the other things as we find is the North Koreans also have entered into the, uh, the Syrian uh, surmise also providing uh, s some of their weaponry for this. So they're, they want to get into a proxy fight also, not, on, uh, not with uh, United States directly, but with Israel as the United States proxy in a battle just to test some stuff out. And so they're, they're sending stuff to Syria too. And so uh, there's a lot going on in the background. Again, you know, I, they had, um, Jerry had, I don't watch, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I do not watch any television news, period. Local or uh, on, 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 on TV. Um, and, and I read all my news, all the news that I have, I read. There's a, the reason for that uh, is this. Um, I don't believe the news. I am, some of you are aware that I was in the news business for a number of years and, and worked for a daily newspaper and I was I wrote for the new, uh, newspaper every day. Uh, and. Um, I know how news put, is put together, and I can see a slanted story from a long ways away. And I can, uh, you know, I don't want to say that I ever slandered one; I didn't, wouldn't have done uh, purposely anyway. But uh, I can see how one can, how they can happen, and I've read a lot of them 
but I watch what news I used to watch. I watched a lot of it. Now, this afternoon, Jerry had on CNN, he, and Jerry uh, Smith was my, my roommate here and came with me from South Carolina. He had on CNN, and I didn't change it because I thought he wanted to watch CNN. You know what? We were, I was in there for an hour and a half, and they only had one topic for an hour and a half. Trump, 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 Trump. That's all they had. They're not telling you about all this other stuff that's going on in the world that's threatening your life, your way of living, your existence, yours and the other people. They're not telling you that news. And that's why you have to read your news and find a good news source for it because you're not going to get it on any, any network news. Uh, none of this. Um, I've never seen it. Uh, of course, again, I gave up watching them, but you're not going to see it because this is not the kind of news I'd like to report. In fact, they're, they're probably a little sympathetic towards some of these other things. Here's the, the possibility we get. If that, that base is that close to Damascus, we, we can set up for something like this. The article concerning Damascus, behold, Damascus is about to be removed from being a city and will become a fallen ruin this passage of scripture has never been fulfilled. Yes, Damascus has had a part of it that was captured, but the city has never been destroyed. In fact, its fame is, it is the oldest continuously inhabited city in the world. So this passage of scripture has not been fulfilled but I think we've got a great possibility of seeing it fulfilled. And it, it may happen as a part of the fallout from the taking uh, place on the, the Iranian base that's near the city. Um, however it happens, it's going to happen. Uh, here we have a satellite picture of the Russian stealth jets in Syria. Uh, you know what that can do. If Israel uh, happens to uh, deal with one of those stealth jets, again, we have another conflict going on in another, with another nation. And uh, it's, it's a real possibility. Again, uh, the, they've, uh, Russia has been themselves trying to fight a proxy war with the United States through Syria. And uh, they love, they love to, uh, just, just to extend themselves and, and uh, spread their wings here a little bit and see what kind of uh, technology they have against our technology, um, you know, what kind of uh, things that they can bring against us. We're pretty close to this. Son of man, set your face toward Gog or the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O God, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you out, and all your army, horses, and horsemen, all of them splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, and all of them wielding swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, all of them with a shield and helmet, Gomer with all its troops, Batogama from the remote parts of the north with all its troops and many people with you. It's interesting in this passage and in, in, in um, um, Psalm 83, we miss, we miss somebody in there, don't we? One of the Arab nations. Let me double check here. Um, who do we miss in all that? The Arab nation we miss, miss in all that. And this one, Psalm 83, is the Arab nation of Egypt. Hmm, isn't that fascinating? They're not in that. Well, it might be a reason. Egypt's president, I don't know if he goes by sissy or not, 
He goes by El Sissy, or, or I don't know how, he, or how they real pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, declared on Wednesday that his country scored a goal by signing a 15 billion dollar deal with an Israeli company to supply natural gas. He said in a televised comments that the project has a lot of advantages for Egyptians on help turn the country into a regional energy hub. How about that? Who would have seen that a coming? Huh? I mean really, you know, Egypt has been a primary player in the previous wars and now they'll have to be a non-factor because they got an economy that's going to be built on something that they're going to get from Israel. So isn't that interesting? And I, again, when you look at those passages, Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, and there's no mention of Egypt, and you always have to ask you, why? Why, why, why? And I don't know if this is the answer or not, but this should sure make good sense, wouldn't it? Why you wouldn't be a part of an attack. So uh, I'm a thinking that might, might be it, yep. <laughs>